Ever since it rebooted its Hitman franchise in 2016, IO Interactive has been putting on a level design masterclass. The missions in the World of Assassination series contain a huge, intricate collection of systems that make them into giant clockwork puzzles of creative murder. You got him, 47. Levels are designed to be played over and over so you can explore, understand, and eventually master all their moving parts. And it's impossible to see everything one has to offer without multiple playthroughs. At first, Hitman 3 appears to be more of the same. It makes no drastic changes to the underlying formula, with only a few graphical upgrades and quality of life improvements to the existing Hitman framework. But Hitman 3 improves on the series through consistently excellent level design. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. Hitman 3 is full of fun and fascinating ideas, many of which play with the concepts that have underpinned the last four years of Hitman levels. Seemingly knowing that players have spent all sorts of time mastering its systems, IO throws in some brilliant curveballs that require you to use your assassination skills and knowledge in clever, challenging new ways. If you've played the past two Hitman games, you'll be immediately familiar with Hitman 3. All the mechanics, AI, and ways you interact with the world are the same. That's key to the way the game works, because your knowledge and understanding make it possible to replay levels again and again to exploit their intricacies in different ways. Rather than feel dated, Hitman 3 highlights how satisfying it can be to understand how all these moving pieces work together, and they're just as impressive as when the series launched in 2016. We got them, 47. Soon there will be no more Providence. In each of the game's locations, your goal is to find a way to eliminate your targets and then escape without being found. You do that largely by knocking out enemies, hiding their bodies, and taking their clothes. Some areas are restricted based on what you're wearing, and some characters can see through your disguises, requiring you to carefully avoid them. Agent 47 has the benefit of Instinct, a vision mode that lets him see through walls and highlights interactive objects. You need to do some sneaking in each level to learn about your targets and find ways to get close to them. Once you've got your opportunity, there are lots of ways you can carry out an assassination. You can just shoot or strangle your target, or use more involved methods, like exposing an electrical wire in a puddle to electrocute them. The stealthier you are and the fewer non-targets you kill, the better your score at the end of a level. And each stage is full of challenges to complete that encourage you to find weird and creative ways to take out your mark. Maybe something natural. Fitting the season and local form. Some of what sets Hitman 3's levels apart is how they fit into the story that's unfolded across the series. In the past, each level has functioned as mostly a standalone chapter. You'd go into a location with one or more targets and uncover a bit of story about the people you were after, which doubled as an opportunity to get close to them. But those targets were usually tangential to the unfolding story of Agent 47 and his handler, Diana Burnwood. Across Hitman 1 and 2, the pair slowly realized they were being manipulated by a figure called the Shadow Client, who was using their assassination contracts to attack Providence, basically the Illuminati. In Hitman 3, Agent 47 and Burnwood have fully joined the fight against Providence. And that means that missions feel like they have a bigger impact and targets are more interesting and make more sense. The levels are based on Providence's responses to your kills, which throws some wrenches into the usual silent assassin format. After developing a brilliant mold for Hitman missions, IO breaks that mold again and again to create fun, memorable, inventive assassination experiences. You might have already heard about Hitman 3's excellent second mission, set in England, where your assassination takes place in the middle of a murder mystery. You can even dress up as a private investigator to find clues and solve the mystery in order to get a chance at your target. Finding clues in the level's huge mansion is like playing another game in the middle of Hitman 3. The brilliance is that, the whole time you're solving the mystery, you're thinking about how you can share or hold back the information you learn to manipulate the characters and accomplish your objective. It's an absolutely phenomenal expansion of how Hitman's intricate levels already work. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. Later missions also put intelligent spins on the series framework. Just about every Hitman mission before now has given you a briefing about your targets and lets you plan your starting position and weapon loadout. So one Hitman 3 level forces you to wing it, locating your targets and learning what you can about them on the fly. Another mission shrinks the scope from a normally expansive setting to a tight, crowded train, 
so that every move and decision you make has to be quick and calculated. None of these missions throw new mechanics at you or force you to learn new enemy behaviors. Instead, Hitman 3 finds new ways to challenge seasoned assassins purely through excellent design. You've honed your assassination skills, but can you solve a mystery? Can you escape other disguised assassins as they're hunting you? It's a fitting testament to how strong the world of assassination games have been all along that IO can make Hitman 3 feel fresh and new simply by finding new ways to take advantage of the series' design foundations. The drawback of Hitman 3 is that while its missions are the most ambitious in the series, the game itself is scaled down somewhat as an overall package. Some additions that appeared in Hitman 2 are gone, including the competitive ghost mode and cooperative sniper assassin missions. You can still play sniper assassin in single player, but only if you own that content from Hitman 2. Still, you could argue that IO is focused on what people like about Hitman while letting less popular parts of the game fade away, but it still feels like there's a little bit less game here than in the past. That said, these games have had great post-release content, and we know that at some point, the timed elusive target missions are making a return. There's also the addition of virtual reality support for PlayStation players, although we played on PC and thus couldn't test it. And like Hitman 2, Hitman 3 supports all the levels from the past two games, so you can play everything from Hitman 1 and Hitman 2 with your new unlocked weapons and Hitman 3's improvements. Getting all your Hitman content in one place continues to be great, although you have to have purchased those missions at some point or another. What's good about Hitman, its level design and the creativity, experimentation, and exploration that affords is great in Hitman 3. It rewards you for mastering the complexity of its levels and of the whole series that came before. Hitman 3 closes out the trilogy by brilliantly playing off everything that came before it and subverting expectations through its phenomenal design.